Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to a 5-Minute Friday on Hunky Vape. It's September 4th, 2020, and here's your news and advocacy for this 5-Minute Friday. Beginning, United Vapors Alliance, Save the Vape Rally, scheduled for tomorrow at noon, from noon to 4. Southwest Quadrant of the Ellipse. Now, for those of you who don't know, here's the White House. This is your Ellipse. Everybody's meeting at the Southwest Quadrant. This is your final chance to have your voice heard. And to be honest with you, I'm not sure if anything can really be done at this point, being that everything that the FDA is doing for PMTAs is by court order. So unless President Trump signs an executive order that declares all nicotine vapor products, or at least open tank system ones, are not considered tobacco products, the PMTA deadline is upon us, and the vape apocalypse has begun. Taking our next story, e-cig click. I have an article titled, No PMTA Extension, says the FDA. And uh, you can read through the article yourself, but it pretty much says what you already know. If you have been paying attention at all, you know that September 9th is the PMTA deadline. If you go specifically to the FDA's website, you can see... Tobacco product applications for deemed tobacco products. Now, there are an unbelievable number of products. 400 million products have been deemed by the FDA as needing or requiring a pre-market tobacco application. So, here's their response posted directly on their website. Because this is ordered by a judge for the United States District Court for the District of Maryland, this is the extension. We were granted an extension back in April. September 9th, 2020 is the deadline. And for those people that follow through with the CASA call to action, the reason the FDA closed everything early, very simple. They published this and it specifically says that if you're having trouble completing your uh, PMTA application, then submit it before September 9th and explain in your application why certain aspects of it are missing. And they will work with you based on individual case by case basis, which means there isn't going to be a blanket 11th hour change of heart. We're stuck with this. This is just the way it is, unfortunately. So, if you can make it, go to the Save the Vape Rally. Let your voices be heard. If you can't, you can always call the White House. Comment line is 202-456- one 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 or you can call the switchboard line 202-456-1414 now we've known about this pmt pmta deadline for quite some time here's a post in reddit vape shop knows nothing of the pmtas up until about a month ago, 100% of my vape shopping took place online, but there's a vape shop near my parents' house in the Poconos that I decided to stop in and check out while the option was still available. I was the only customer in the store and got quite chatty with the young men working there, and I asked them what their plans were for the shop, given the coming crackdowns, and I was told that none of it applied to them because it would only impact a handful of states, specifically in regard to flavored liquid sales. This is clearly incorrect, 
But the young man had such a firmly established response and empathetic delivery that I couldn't bring myself to violate, violently destroy his illusions right then and there. So I just says, well, I was under a different impression, but okay. You can read it for yourself right in Reddit. However, I went to my own local vape shop and had a conversation with the guy. Now, this man's been working there for oh, about five years or so. Shortly after the shop opened, he's been working there. And I says, so uh, what are you going to do about the, the PMTA? How's that going to affect you guys here? You know, have you contacted your supplier? Or what do you expect to be able to continue doing after this is done and over with? What is what's going to be on your shelf September 10th? Do you have a list of those items yet? And his answer to me was, well, when the owner calls me and tells me I need to remove things out of a case, then I'll remove it out of the case. But otherwise, we're only going to lose, you know, a couple lines of juice. The rest of them, they've already filed for their PMTA, so it's okay. Looking at what they had in their shop, everything in the case was introduced within the past year. Now, for those of you that haven't delved down into what a PMTA requires, there's some dates that you need to learn. All right? Because this has been going on for a long, long time. So, jumping directly to the FDA's website, let's see what they have to say about the subject. Okay? All new, non-grandfathered tobacco products are required to obtain a PMTA. If you are marketing a deemed tobacco product that is new and was on the market as of August 8th, 2016, you will need to submit a marketing application by September 9th, 2020. Understandable. And if you submit an application and the FDA accepts it, your product can stay on the shelves. If it was marketed prior to August 8th, 2016, okay? If it was marketed or released to the market after August 8th, 2016, here's what the FDA has to say about your product. Let's just scroll on down. On August 8th, 2016, all deemed tobacco products, except for accessories of deemed tobacco products, including ENDS, electronic nicotine delivery systems, cigars, hookah, tobacco, pipe tobacco, nicotine gel, certain dissolvables became subject to the FDA's tobacco authorities, including pre-market authorization requirements in the Food, Drug, and Cosmetic Act. All deemed new tobacco products must have a PMTA from the FDA to be legally marketed. However, as an exercise of its enforcement discretion, the agency has deferred enforcement until September 9th. I'm not going to get through the whole rigmarole of how we got here, but that is the date that's on the tombstone. Beginning September 9th, FDA intends to prioritize enforcement against ENDS product that continues to be sold and for which a tobacco authorization has not been received from the manufacturer. Okay, so if the product was introduced to the market in the last six months, in the last nine months, in the last year, you know what's going to happen come September 10th? They are going to be considered black market, illicit, illegal products to be sold in the United States. Now, you as a consumer can purchase these items from other countries. 
through the mail. You want to wait three or four weeks for them. However, the shops, all these mom and pop shops, all these small businesses that created what we know as the vape industry will have no products to sell other than the products that people filed PMTAs for and declared that that product was on the market prior to the cutoff date. Now, I know that the, most of these shops are going to keep selling it and keep selling it because they just are banking on the fact that the FDA is not going to come after them. Okay. But what happens when their manufacturers refuse to send it here because they don't want their stuff seized at customs? Because they know that their products were not submitted for PMTA. The market is going to dry up. And yes, you can order from Canada, you can order from the United Kingdom, you can order from Australia, you can order from wherever you want to order from. You can order directly from the manufacturer in China. However, the apocalypse is on us. So, do your shopping now. Because if you're not ready to survive this, I don't want to see you going back to smoking. So your two choices are going to be give up vaping altogether when you run out of supplies, or you could DIY yourself, sure. Or you could, you know, accept the fact that uh, three quarters of the juice that you've known and loved and fallen in love with is not going to be available because like Vape Wild, they came onto the scene after the cutoff date. And what's the point of spending millions of dollars to complete your PMTA when September 10th your product's going to be illegal until the FDA gets around to approve it? And how long is it going to take for all those products and all the paperwork to be done by the FDA for them? I guarantee you they're going to be looking for an extension to complete the authorizations. Right now you get 12 months of continual sales after you submit your product application waiting for approval. So unless the FDA decides to be very gracious and just blanket approve everybody, dire straits are ahead for the American consumers. It's going to definitely change the way that you have been getting your stuff. If you've been running down to the local store to pick up your product, they'll still have plenty of juices because there's plenty of juice manufacturers that applied for stuff and they're going to have plenty of pods. But as it stands right now, I'm a final single person that thinks that the open tanks and systems with the 510 pins that have interchangeability, the thing that makes vaping so wonderful, are still going to be out on the market. All right, enough ranting from me. It, it, it did upset me to find out that my local shop was just so careless about the fact that well yeah it's coming up we're gonna lose some of our juices but we'll be all right this is why we can't get the vaping community together to actually go against our politicians to prevent them from taking our rights away from us unlike in the philippines joint house committees approve vape and heated tobacco bill why is it that the other countries Countries that, you know, we were touted in high school as, oh, those are third world nations. Why is it that they have their shit together? But this country keeps fucking things up left and right, keeps taking our rights away from us? Well, this article was just posted uh, yesterday it's in the Vaping Post. Link in the description below. Go ahead and check it out. Let's jump over to uh, United Kingdom. The National Health Service Mental Health Trust banned smoking completely in all North Cumbria sites. The uh, group director, David Muir, says smoking and breathing in secondhand smoke puts people at greater risk of a whole host of illnesses. The evidence so far 
also suggests people who smoke may be at an increased risk of severe disease if they get COVID-19. They didn't mention the fact that, you know, nicotine and smokers, nicotine users and smokers are underrepresented in the COVID cases. However, because you smoke, I can see the propensity to have a more severe reaction if you do get COVID. However, he continues to say, we have a duty of care to provide a health, healthy and safe environment for people receiving treatment and support from us, their visitors and our staff. Going smoke-free is an important part of that. People with mental health issues tend to smoke more than other people, meaning they are more vulnerable to the harmful effects of smoking. Men and women with severe mental health illness die 15 to 20 years earlier than the national average, and smoking is the biggest single reason for that difference. The trust also stresses that the common belief that smoking aids with the stress relief is false, and that smoking actually increases feelings of anxiety and tension. However, Vaping, which is considerably less harmful than smoking, will continue to be allowed in designated areas. Once again, the United Kingdom is leaps and bounds, decades ahead of the United States, in how they are treating mental health issues and facing the reality that science has proven over the decades up until now. Vaping is 97% safer than smoking deadly combustible cigarettes. And now, the single best way to quit smoking is going to be taken away from the next generation of people that want to quit smoking. The choices are going to be severely limited unless drastic changes come down the road. Either the FDA needs to play loosey-goosey and start accepting the mountains of applications that they have based on the fact that it's, the science has already been proven for vaping And the studies that they are submitting now indicate that, you know, vaping, especially nice open tank systems with big mods, are not attractive to youth. This stuff's going to disappear from the American consumer market. There are 41 million vapors across the globe. 13 million of them are in this country. And you better believe if 13 million people Go to their politician and say, I have a single issue decision on who I vote for. If vaping is the most important decision for me on which candidate gets my vote come election time, they're going to start listening. But you have to get out there and have your voice be heard. Tomorrow, noon to four, Washington, D.C., southwest corner of the Ellipse. If you can't be there or don't want to take the chance of going there because of COVID, that's understandable. However, your voice can still be heard. Call the comment line at the White House. Area code 202-456-1111. Or call the switchboard line. 202-456-1411. The time is dwindling away. And effective September 10th, reality will start setting in for all these people that don't care or just don't want to pay attention. That's it for today's news. That's it for today's advocacy. I hope you can go. And if you can't, please pick up the phone and call. Let them know how you feel about this. That's it for today, everybody. Hope you enjoy your Labor Day weekend. Peace, love, and a hunky vape. It's all you need.